That was two days of winds 30 knots basically. We had a stern anchor here, so we got to try and pull it out. I think the next thing we've got to do is get going. The fortress anchor is a favorite of ours, since they're very good in sand and mud, plus they can be disassembled and stowed. They're light and come in a relatively small carrying case, so you can carry additional, quite large anchors easily. I keep the smaller one assembled and ready to go in the stern locker. This anchor weighs just 15 pounds, but it's big enough for day-to-day -day anchoring. For stronger winds, I use our larger one, still just 21 pounds plus the chain. You can see we have lots of scope, so the anchor road is pulling right parallel with the bottom. When we put some throttle on, the anchor buries nicely. You can see the flukes digging in deeper and the stock holding the anchor parallel to the bottom. This anchor has an innovation where the flukes can be set at a steeper angle for use in soft mud. Here it's set at the shallow normal angle for sand. Now Cheryl increases to 2500 RPM and it really sets in. A textbook perfect anchor set. In a storm, this anchor will set even deeper and can be very difficult to get up. We do have a second fortress on board ready for storms. Last summer we got a chance to test both of them out as we rode out Tropical Storm Chantel in a mangrove. I'm setting the fortress with 10 to 1 scope and setting it by pulling with the dinghy. Once I got back aboard, we used the main engine in forward to pull harder and set it well. The force on cleats and line is very large and you have to set up with good chafing gear to make sure you don't chafe through. Our cleats lead directly without going through a chalk, so that isn't an issue here. The anchors held perfectly with winds over 50 knots, setting so deeply it took five minutes pulling straight up to raise the fortress. What are you doing? Tight rope walking. Whoa! This is... The strain... Oh, finally! Oh my goodness. This anchor just sets like crazy. What anchor is that? This is the Fortress 37 that held through the whole part of the storm. I think it's off the bottom. Okay. Here is another time when we used the Fortress in a blow, and it was very interesting to see how well the anchor sets. Our boat has a lifting keel, so we can sit on the bottom at low water here in the Wadden Sea in Holland. I'm putting out an extra anchor. We're supposed to be getting a whole pile of wind, and it seems to have come seems to have come stronger than it was forecast. It seems like we got the tide catching up on me now. When you assemble the anchor, everything slots in easily. Then it just needs two wrenches to tighten the bolts and it's ready to set. The wrenches are included in the bag. Wow, it's already ankle deep here. I can walk the anchor out since the tide is still low. Tidal range here is about seven feet. I'm using the fortress to hold our stern in position to the seas. The winds blow over 30 knots and both our main Rockna anchor and the stern fortress hold perfectly in the good sand. Well, the big blow is over. That was two days of winds 30 knots, basically. We had a stern anchor here, so we got to try and pull it out. I think the next thing we've got to do is get going uh, with the next high tide. The water's coming in in about another hour. So, somewhere. I was really interested to see how deeply the anchor had set, but I was not actually able to dig deep enough to even find the anchor. After we refloated, we pulled it out using a winch. Time for a cup of tea. Enjoy this beautiful place. It's been really interesting to be here. The seals, the birds, 
and to see the weather in the North Sea. Verdict? The fortress makes a great second and third anchor. It's great for use in sand and mud, but not so good in grass. Do not use it for rocks. Because it may be disassembled, you can carry a much larger one than would otherwise be practical. Consider it insurance in a bag. Thanks for watching this Distant Shores how-to segment. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Are you interested in the cruising lifestyle? Are you planning to sail away on a cruising adventure? Or researching cruising areas and destinations? Distant Shores is a television series about the cruising life with lots of tips for sailors planning to sail away. This is Oswego, New York. We are entering the Erie Canal system and this will take us all the way from Lake Ontario to the Hudson River, which gets us to New York City. Plus destination information to help you make your cruising plans. Yeah, I can stand on the bottom. We've been filming distant shores for nearly 15 years and know the fun and challenges of the cruising life. We've made distant shores with you in mind. We include plenty of cruising tips in this travel series, as well as lifestyle segments and hints for sailors heading to exotic destinations. Encouragement for you and your crew to get out cruising. Destinations include the Intracoastal Waterway, the Bahamas, Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Scandinavia, Transatlantic Passage Making, the French Canals and more.